Hi, this is Ryan with Automatic Comics, and up next I'm going to talk about the top 10 X-Men books and the ones that I think you should be buying right now. Stay tuned! Alright, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So. For this video, I had been talking with a friend on Instagram, and they had recommended that I consider doing uh, basically a top 10 video on X-Men books, but not necessarily the top 10 most valuable books, but the top 10 most important books for X-Men. And so I decided I would put a little bit of a twist on that, and I would do the, the top 10 books but then also look at how their prices have changed over the last year to see which ones might be the ones that you should be looking at buying right now. Now, because I think we all know that X-Men number one is the most important book out there, I'm going to do a top 11. Uh, and then I've got a bonus book at the end that I'm also going to talk about. Now, I did also limit myself on the time frame because X-Men has a lot of issues over the last 60 years. So what I did was... I'm going with the first 141 books. And the reason I picked that is that through issue 141, the X-Men are called X-Men. Uh, at issue 142, in the indicia in the comics, it's officially changed to Uncanny X-Men. And uh, that, that happens at issue 114, I believe, uh, when the first time it changes on the title, but I decided to go with, you know, through 141. So, so these are the top 10 most important books, in my opinion, uh, in the uh, first 141 issues. Now, I'm sure that people will have disagreements or other opinions, that kind of thing, and that is totally fine. Uh, feel free to put that down in the comments. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna present the books in order of what I think is their importance in the X-Men run. Then I'm also going to talk about the price that they were selling for a year ago, so May 2020, and their current price, approximately based on what I've determined that to be uh, on recent sales, and what the percent change has been since that year. And I think something you're gonna see with this is just, it really shows how crazy the current comic market is with the significant price increases that we've seen across the board on these key issues over the last year. So for these books, I'm going to evaluate their percent increases in price. And based on that, I will have some recommendations on which ones I think you might want to look into buying now that may have the biggest potential return moving forward. And so you can't compare the same grade across all of those issues. And the way that I picked the grade that I'm using between each of them, because obviously we've got a pretty long span of time from issue one to issue 141. So similar to what I did when I provided my recommendation for X-Men 94 about two months ago, I used the most common copy per the CGC census. So for example, in X-Men number one, the copy of that book, the grade of that book that is most common is a 3.0. So that's what I used for that book for my analysis for these numbers. All right, so let's get started. So the first one, the most important issue, I think, you know, not a lot of discussion there. X-Men number one, first appearance of the X-Men, first appearance of Magneto. I mean, without it, you don't have any of the other issues. I mean, it, it really it kind of has to be number one in, in my mind. Now, like I said, the most common grade is a 3.0, and the price of that book in May of 2020 was $4,500. The price today, and because this isn't a book that sells all that often, you kind of have maybe a little bit of a range. Uh, the price today, I said it was about $14,000 with a range from $13,750 to $15,000. So that is a price increase of 210 to 230% in the last year. So, I mean, think about that. For a book that expensive, that is a significant increase in value. Now, the second book, also, I don't think this one is up to too much debate. I have as Giant Size X-Men number one. Now, I realize that that isn't in the 1 to 141 range of issues, but this is my channel, so I get to pick which ones I want to use. So I chose Giant Size X-Men 1 as my, my second. And first appearance of the new X-Men minus Wolverine, and the most common grade, and this may be a little surprising, but the most common grade is an 8.5, which is a very high grade. And the price in May of 2020 was only $2,400, with the current price being approximately $8,000. Uh, 
Uh, now there was an $8,700 sale on April 30th, but it was an old label, which often means that people are going to potentially pay a little more thinking they might be able to, to crack it out and get a higher grade. And there was a $7,400 sale on May 1st, so that's kind of why I picked the $8,000 price. Now this is an increase of 210 to 260%. So a little more than X-Men 1, but uh, still very substantial for an expensive book over the last year. Now, number three that I have on the list, and I've talked about this book in the past. This is my, possibly my favorite X-Men cover, and this is X-Men number 101. Now, the reason why I picked this one as number three is this is the first appearance of the Phoenix. This is when the X-Men are getting much more cosmic. It's a really big shift in the X-Men storylines, and... It's just a huge character that has been used over and over and over again in the history of the X-Men. So I have X-Men 101 as my, my number three, and the most common grade is a 9-4. So this is a much more modern book, and the price in May of 2020 was $750, with the current price being approximately $1,850. And there was a $1,837 sale on April 25th, so I think that's, that's pretty accurate. And this was an increase of approximately 150%. So not as much as those other ones. So keep that in mind because I, you know, we'll be talking about that later. Now for number four, I have X-Men number 94. And this was the book that I had recommended a couple months ago that really hadn't moved as much as X-Men 1 and Giant Size X-Men 1. And this is the first time that you have the new X-Men in their regular title. So this is a very significant step in my mind for that series of books. I mean, before then, a bunch of reprints. You know, this was a big shift for X-Men. X-Men was in trouble as a title until this, you know, big shift. And so you have the new X-Men appearing in X-Men 94, and from that moment forward, I mean, X-Men title has been extremely popular. And the most common grade is a 7.5, and the price in May of 2020 was only $475. I mean, that book was so underpriced, it is crazy, because the current price is $2,500 for a 7.5. With asking prices right now on eBay, anything from $2,999 to $3,700. Now, those aren't you know sold prices, but these are the types of prices people are trying to get for that book in a 7.5 right now. And that is an increase of 430%. Massive increase. Just totally eclipsing X-Men 1 and Giant Size X-Men 1 now in terms of price increase. And most of that happened basically since I recommended that book about two months ago. Now number five on the list is X-Men number 14. And the reason I picked this one is it's the first Sentinels. Uh, other than Magneto, I just I see them as the most consistent, regular antagonist to the X-Men. And if you watch the cartoon back when you were a kid, like I've mentioned before, you just, you saw them all the time. I, I see these Sentinels as just critical to the history of the X-Men, just trying to capture the mutants and stop the mutants. And, and I, I think that they are, other than Magneto, the most important villain to the X-Men. And the most common grade is actually relatively high. It's a 7.0. And the price in May of 2020 was only $450 for a 7.0. The current price is $1,700. With asking prices anywhere from $1,800 to $2,200 on eBay right now. And so that is a 280% increase in that book since last year, since May of 2020. All right, now number six. This is a, one of my favorite books, and this is X-Men number four. This is the introduction of a lot of new characters into the X-Men title. You've got the first Scarlet Witch, the first Quicksilver, the first Brotherhood of Evil Mutants, which plays a big role within the X-Men title moving forward. It's also the second appearance of Magneto. And Scarlet Witch has been a really major character recently as well. And I'm not just talking about the, the TV show, but with the House of M storyline, I mean, she has played a major role in the X-Men. And the most common grade is pretty low. It's a 4-0. And the price in May of 2020 was $675. I mean, and it's, it's crazy thinking about those prices now. I, I feel like it's hard to even believe that those were real. But, you know, you go back and you check the pricing data and that is what they were selling for because the current price is $3,000 for a 4 which is a price increase of 340% in the last year. Now, it's not a huge shock that that book has seen a significant increase in price because of the popularity of 
WandaVision and, you know, really the, the hype that's now going around a lot of these MCU type shows, Disney Plus shows. Um, so it's not a shock that that book has gone up as much as it has, but still a significant increase, 340% in the last year. Now the next one, it, this one may surprise you uh, because I feel like it's a book that's a little bit under people's radar, but I think this is a very significant book. This is number seven on my list. This is X-Men number 10. And this is the first appearance of Kazar, and while that's not really the reason I have this book on this list, the reason I have it on this list is this is the first time that you have the Savage Lands. And the Savage Lands introduce a bunch of new characters like Sauron, and it's also involved in a ton of X-Men storylines. I mean, it is a very important part of the history of the X-Men and stories that have been used for the last 60 years. So I think that is a very significant title in the X-Men run, so I have it as number seven. Most Common Grade is a 7.0, and the price in May of 2020 was just $375. Now the current price is between $850 and $900, which is a price increase of only 130 to 140%. I mean, again, another book, you know, keep in mind for, for what we're going to talk about later because that book has not moved nearly as much as some of these other issues. but you really think about it it has still gone up over double i mean for so it's i mean it's up 130 to 140 percent that is extremely significant for a comic book that is not normal in the history of comics to have the prices of these books move up that much in a single year okay now number eight i've got x-men number 141 and with these more modern books i'm specifically referring to the direct editions not the newsstands Part of that is just because there's more historical data available for that pricing, and so it makes it easier to make these kinds of comparisons. Now, this is the first Days of Future Past story, and it is one of the most popular storylines in Marvel, and, and especially within the X-Men title. Awesome movie, you know, as well. It is a very significant story for the X-Men, for the X-Men title. And the most common grade is a 9.6. I mean, again, a much more modern book. You're going to have much higher grades of this book available. And in two, May of 2020, it was a $210 book. It is currently only a $435 book, so an increase of only 110%. Now, one thing I do want to point out with this, though, is that for a 9.8, it was a $450 book in May of 2020, and it had a sale of $1,950 on April 10th, and $1,726 on April 19th. So while the 9.6 price has only gone up 110%, the 9.8 price has gone up 280 to 330%. So that's definitely something to maybe consider that the 9.6 may currently be undervalued and a book that could be really good to go after. Now, number nine on my list, another villain. Uh, this is X-Men number 12. This is the first juggernaut one of the X-Men's most popular villains. I still put the Sentinels in front of Juggernaut just because I see them as more consistently being an enemy of the X-Men, a more important enemy throughout the history of that title. And the most common grade with this, very similar with a lot of these early Silver Age books, is a 7.0. And the price in May of 2020 was $700. So a little more than some of the other books like X-Men 10 and X-Men uh, 14. But the current price is 2300 to 2500 and so that's an increase of 230 to 260%. A significant increase in that, which again, one of the most popular villains in the X-Men title. It's an amazing book, an awesome cover, so you can definitely see why there is a lot of demand out for that book. Now, number 10 on my list is X-Men number 129. And the reason I have that one there, this is the introduction again of multiple new important characters, including Kitty Pride, Emma Frost, Sebastian Shaw, and the group called the Hellfire Club, which does play a significant role in the X-Men title for a long time after that, that initial issue. And similar to X-Men number 141, the most common graded copy is a 9.6. And the price in May of 2020 was just $400. But its current price, $1,600. It had a $1,599 sale on April 18th. So those are, you know, these are real prices that have been realized for these books. And that's an increase of 300% in the last year. I mean, Kitty Pride is a fan favorite. Emma Frost is a fan favorite. And Sebastian Shaw is a significant villain in the X-Men title. So, I mean, 
multiple first appearances, it is not surprising that this book has seen significant gains over the last year. All right, now number 11. Now this is, you know, the one I basically added because I just assume, you know, X-Men 1 is always going to be number one on that list. And the one I picked for this was X-Men number nine. And the reason I did that was because this is the first time you have the Avengers crossing over in the title. And with everything that's been going on with, you know, building up the MCU over the last 10 years, I just, I see this as a really significant book that should be paid attention to. And the most common grade, just like those other ones, 7.0. And the price in May of 2020 is just $450 with the current price being $1,100. And the last sale was $1,050 on April 2nd, and higher grade copies just do not come up for sale very often with this book. Um, this is an a price increase of only 140%. So again, something to pay attention to, you know, an important book that really hasn't seen the increases in prices that we've seen with some of these other issues. Now, the last one I added, I'm just gonna say this is kind of like a bonus one because I know I, I was only going through issue 141, but I realized that for a lot of people, a really important book is X-Men 266, the first full appearance of Gambit. I uh, just say that to try to limit the hate that I will get for, <laughs> for not talking about the annual. And so, you know, this is the first appearance of Gambit, fan favorite character, most common grade, again, is a 9.6. And the price in May of 2020 was just 200 bucks for a direct edition 9.6. Current price, $480. So not that big of an increase, only 140% increase for that book. And with this one, even in the 9.8, the prices are kind of all over the place right now, but anywhere from 1,200 to 1,500. I mean, there was a $1,200 sale yesterday, I believe. And one year ago at a 9.8, this was a $425 book. So that's anywhere from 180 to 250% increase, depending on where that book is getting priced at. And so only being up 180% at that 9.8, it does seem a lot more expensive now because it crossed that $1,000 mark, but in comparison to these other books, it really hasn't gone up all that much. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna pop a little figure up over here, and this is the list that I had in order from one through 12. And it's, you know, the issue, the grade, uh, the current price, as well as the price from a year ago and the percent change, just so you can kind of see all of that in one place and see what those different percentages are for each book. And you can see that there's a pretty big range in how much these different key issues have increased over the last year. You know, anywhere from 110% for X-Men number 141 all the way up to 430% for X-Men 94. And so the next thing I wanted to do is I just wanted to order them from the ones that have increased the least in terms of percentage to the most. So I'm going to plug, uh, you know, another figure up here. And so this is these prices reordered based on the percent change in price over the last year from the smallest percent change to the largest percent change. And now I am not saying that you shouldn't buy one of the books that's on the bottom of that list, or you must buy the book that's on the top of the list. Again, it is still, you know, it's collecting, it's buying what you want. I'm just saying that if you're looking for potentially the best value, something where there could be significant increases in price still moving forward, or books that may take a little bit of a breather while these other books are catching up, this is some information that you could use to potentially make that decision. And so you can see here that the number one book on that list that I have here is X-Men number 141 in a 9.6, only going up 110%. Number two, is X-Men number 10. And I think this is a great book to pick up, really undervalued, only up between 130 and 140%. It's not very expensive in the lower grades still, so it's definitely a book that, that anybody can get. Uh, the same thing with X-Men number nine. Again, only up 140%, still relatively affordable in the lower grades. It is getting pricier in those kind of mid to higher grades, but it's a Silver Age book. There's plenty of lower grades available. Definitely a book that, that you can still pick up. And I thought it was interesting that the next book here that I, I had honestly, I thought maybe it had gone up more, but uh, X-Men 266, you know, the 9-6 of the first appearance of Gambit, only up 140%. I mean, for a character that is that popular to only have moved that much while it's 9-8 has gone up 
quite a bit more, 180 to 250 percent. That's definitely a book that I think, you know, the nine sixth grade is something that would be worthwhile to go after. And the last one, just to kind of round out a, a top five of, of recommended books, is X Men number 101, first appearance of Phoenix. I mean, to me, one of the most iconic books in the entire X Men run, and shocking personally that it is only up 150 percent when you have some of these other books that are up around 300 percent so i think there is potentially a lot of room to move still on that book now all these other books are still you know they are great books i mean i have i don't have an x-men one but i have a giant size x-men one i have an x-men 12 and i have an x-men 14 and 129 a 4 and a 94 i have all these books so i'm not ragging on those books or anything like that i'm just saying if you are looking for a book to invest in right now that has the potential maybe for a higher uh, return then the ones on the near the top of that list are the ones that i would be recommending right now so i hope you thought this video was useful you know i i i thought it was interesting to kind of go through these i'm, I'm thinking about doing this with a few other titles you know just i think it's fun kind of looking through and trying to compare to see which books I would consider the most important within that title and then kind of trying to pull some of the, the sales data in and seeing how those prices have changed over the last year. So, you know, if you enjoyed this, you know, leave a comment below, let me know, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this, and I will see you in the next video.